Hello, and welcome to VidHammer, the battle report resource for Warhammer Fantasy. In this video, we'll be covering the first round matchup at the Phoenix Games Tournament in Orlando in February of 2012. This is a 2500 point battle for the pass engagement between the Demons of Chaos and the Tomb Kings armies using the 8th edition rules. Deployment and setup are as per the Warhammer rules, with the deployment zones being on the short edges of the table, one foot from the center line. Additional tournament rules have been added for flavor. For this engagement, each army fights with cornered ferocity, making its general and the unit it is with unbreakable. If that unit contains demons, they are stubborn, and if they are undead, they will not take additional wounds from combat resolution. Additional battle points are awarded for destroying the opposing general and for keeping your general alive. Objective points are also given for having a non-fleeing unit in your opponent's deployment zone and not having an enemy non-fleeing unit in your own deployment zone. All forests are mysterious, and all other terrain types are considered to be normal terrain of that type. For spell generation, the Tomb Kings have a level 4 Lich Priest as their Hierophant that gets the incantations of Cursed Blades, Protection, Righteous Smiting, and Desiccation, as well as a level 2 Lich Priest that ends up with Light of Battle and Barona's Time Warp from the Lore of Light. The demons have Kairos Fate Weaver, who knows all of the Zinch spells and chooses additional spells instead of rolling for them. The demons win the placement roll and elect to set up on the lower right edge of the table. They make their first placement and start with a unit of six Flamers of Zinch that go on their right flank. The Tomb Kings follow with a casket of souls that goes in their corner just off the top of the screen. Thirty-five blood letters come down next to the flamers, and the Tomb Kings place two Screaming Skull catapults that go off screen as well. Thirty-eight more blood letters come down next to the first ones, as the Tomb Kings put down three skeleton chariots that go off screen to the far left. The demons make their final placement of thirty-five plague bearers on the left side of their battle line, and the Tomb Kings place a war sphinx that makes it on screen. Since the demons are done with placement, the Tomb Kings bring out a unit of 57 archers that are in 30 wide formation span the length of their battle line, followed by a War Sphinx, a Necrolith Colossus, and a unit of 5 skeletal horse archers who are scouts that end up below the bottom of the screen. The demons put Kairos down behind their central blood letters, and the Tomb Kings put High Queen Kalita and both casters in with their archers. The demons win the starting roll and begin moving their battle line forward, except for the flamers that pull back towards the skeletal horse archers. Winds of Magic gives the demons 10 power dice against 6 to spell dice. They use 2 dice to cast Boon of Zinch, giving them back 2 power dice. Next, they use three dice to cast Throne of Vines to avoid future miscasts. They use two dice to cast Glean Magic to steal and cast one of the enemy wizard's spells. They take Verona's Time Warp and cast it on the rightmost blood letters. With their remaining dice, they cast Flesh to Stone with irresistible force on the central blood letters and avoid the miscasts with their Throne of Vines effect. In the shooting phase, the flamers shoot at the horse archers and hit for seven wounds. The Tomb Kings hold position with all of their units in the first turn. Winds of Magic gives them seven power dice against four dispel dice. They start by casting Neru's Incantation of Protection to give the archers a five plus ward save. Next they attempt the Incantation of Righteous Smiting, but it gets dispelled. Finally, the Casket of Souls attempts Light of Death, but it gets dispelled with the final die. In the shooting phase, the Screaming Skull Catapults shoot for the central blood letters, but both shots drift off and the archers are out of range, for now. In the second turn, the demons move their flamers back towards their right flank, and the rest of the line moves forward with the rightmost blood letters getting a double move out of Barona's Time Warp that they stole in the first turn.
For the magic phase, the demons end up with 7 power dice against 6 dispel dice. For their first spell, they cast Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma on the Archer unit to lower their ballistic skill by 1. They then attempt Wyson's Wild Form on the upper blood letters, but it gets dispelled. They use their final 2 dice to cast Pit of Shades, but it gets dispelled with a scroll. The Flamers are out of range, so there's no shooting for this round. The Tomb King's turn starts with a unit of Sepulchral Stalkers coming up from behind the unit of Flamers. The rest of the Tomb King's units hold position for another round. A roll of Snake Eyes for the Magic Phase sees two Power Dice against a single Dispel Die, but the Tomb King picks up two more dice from the Casket of Souls, and both players channel a die as well. They attempt to cast Righteous Smiting, which gets dispelled, but they succeed at casting Incantation of Desiccation on the upper blood letters, reducing their strength and toughness by one. Finally, they cast the Casket's Bound spell Light of Death on the upper blood letters for four wounds, but the neighboring unit isn't close enough for the spell to bounce to. For shooting, the Stalkers hit the Flamers for two wounds, taking out one model. Then the Archer unit volley fires into the blood letters with 55 shots, hitting for 8 poison wounds and another 16 normal wounds. The demons save 12 and lose 12. The catapults shoot for the forward blood letters and take out two more, while the chariots shoot for the plague bringers but miss. The demons start the third turn with their blood letters charging the skeletal archers, who can only elect to hold as a charge reaction. The central blood letters do a swift reform and move around the house as the flamers turn to face the stalkers. Winds of Fate and Channeling gives the demons ten power dice against seven dispel dice. They cast Boon of Zinch with two dice and get two back. Then they use three dice to cast Glean Magic and steal the Tomb King's spell Invocation of Desiccation to give the Archer unit minus one to strength and toughness. Next they use five dice to cast Flesh to Stone on the Bloodletter unit for plus two to toughness, which increases to a plus four due to the Throne of Vines effect. They use their last two dice to attempt regrowth, but it gets dispelled. For shooting, the flamers shoot at the stalkers and take out two models. In the first close combat, the blood letters hit the archers for nine wounds. The archers deal two wounds in return, but both get saved. The archers take another ten wounds in crumbling that they shouldn't have since their general Kalita was with that unit. The Tomb Kings elect not to move and jump into the magic phase with seven power dice against seven dispel dice. They use six dice to attempt the incantation of righteous smiting, but it gets dispelled. They use their remaining die to attempt the casket's bound spell, but it gets dispelled with the final dispel die. The Tomb Kings forego shooting and start their combat phase. The Blood Letters do another nine wounds to the skeletons who take out two Blood Letters in return. The Tomb Kings lose the combat and remove six more models. The Demons move up their rear blood letters and Kairos in turn four. Winds of Magic sees the Demons with ten power dice against six dispel dice. They cast Boon of Zinch with two dice and, once again, get two dice back. Next, they use two dice to cast Regrowth and regain six models in the Bloodletter unit. They use six more dice to put Flesh to Stone on the Bloodletters with irresistible force, but they avoid the miscast, and they don't bother using the last die against six Dispel Dice. For shooting, the Flamers deal five wounds, finishing off the last Stalker. In close combat, the Blood Letters hit the remaining 17 archers for 15 wounds, and they decide to call the game. The Demons of Chaos took the victory in this match, but an extra round of shooting and attention to the no crumbling rule could have made a significant difference in the final score. We hope you've enjoyed this battle report. Be sure and check back for more videos each week. 
do us a favor and subscribe. And as always, be sure and send us a message if you have any tactics or matchups that you'd like to see. Till next time from the Vidhammer crew, keep fighting.